welcome to Maggie Mumbles. My name is Maggie and on this channel I mumble about the things that are interesting to me and especially things that relate to witchcraft and spirituality. So if that sounds interesting to you, please make sure that you hit the like button, the thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified each new time that I put out a new video. So today I wanted to talk about what an intention is. In a previous video I talked about the importance of setting an intention for your witchcraft practice as well as setting an intention for just pretty much anything that you do throughout your day for the intention for cleaning, the intention for cooking, the intention for going to work or whatever it is that you're doing throughout your day how setting intentions can improve your experience for on a day-to-day -day basis. In that video I sort of touched on what I mean by setting intentions, but I wanted to devote an, a whole video to it. So that's what we're doing today. So if you are wondering, Maggie, what is an intention, then this video is for you. The word intention is kind of a new age buzzword, witchy, metaphysical, spiritual buzzword these days. At a basic level, an intention is a descriptive statement that is communicated clearly and specifically about what you want from a spell or what your desired outcome is from the thing that you're doing, why you're directing your energy or your magic toward a specific activity. So as I've previously talked about, you can set an intention for pretty much anything that you do, but today I want to talk specifically about setting an intention for your spell work or your rituals or the things that you are actively using magic to, to do. And the reason that this is important is because intention is a really important stage of the spell work process, setting your intention. There could be a lot of different reasons for why a spell wouldn't work, but I, in my experience, I feel like it's because I wasn't very clear with what I wanted to have happen. So my spell didn't appear to work because the outcome didn't look anything like what I really wanted to have happen. So it looked like nothing happened. When in fact, there was likely something else that occurred, but I wasn't really paying attention to that thing because it wasn't related to what the spell was about. And it was because I wasn't clear on what I wanted and I didn't put that intention into the spell. Let's start by talking about what a successful spell looks like because I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. P different people have different impressions about what a successful spell is. To me, a successful spell means that you are seeing the changes that you want to have happen in your life. So, think, so whatever changes you're trying to make, it's the way that you want it to look. You're starting to see things going the way that you want them to go. Another way that a spell might be successful is if you are seeing opportunities that are in, aligned with the spell work opening to you. So for example, maybe you were doing a spell to find a new job and then you start being more aware of different opportunities that are open to you, different jobs that you might not have considered before, you're aware of those opportunities. A successful spell can also mean that you are more connected to whatever you believe in, so whatever higher power or external force that you believe in, if any, whatever, it's hard, it's hard to describe because we all have different beliefs, but whatever thing that you believe in, how the world works, how the universe works, how things, how magic works, you feel more connected to that thing. So that might be yourself, that might be you feel more connected to who you are authentically, it might be that you feel more connected to a god, if you're monotheistic then just god, it might be god or goddess, a specific deity in some pantheon or several if you follow, if you work with the many different deities, it could be that you feel more connected to some sort of abstract concept like love or joy or Again, anything that you really believe in that is a spiritual sky boss, I guess, feeling more connected to that thing. A spell can also be successful if you feel more confident to take risks or to take uh, steps toward the goals that you've set for yourself. You know, sometimes we have big goals and part of getting to the goal means that you need to take those steps in order to get to that goal. And prior to casting the spell, you might have not had the ability or the confidence or the direction to know what those steps are. So if you feel like you can now take 
even a tiny step towards your goal, I feel like that is an example of a successful spell. If you feel like whatever is happening is in relation to the spell that you cast, I think that that's a reason, that's an example of a um, successful spell. That you feel that it is part of, it is because of the spell that you cast that these things are happening, that is evidence enough that your spell was successful because you feel it was. Sometimes spells do fail, they're not successful, and it usually doesn't look like anything is happening or something weird happened. To me, that's a sign that, you know, to to change the way that I worded the intention or to change the symbols or the colors or any of the materials that I used in the spell so that they are more aligned with what my intention is. So there's, it usually is an indication that I didn't, there was something not quite right in what the procedure was. So if I just tweak it a little bit, let's try it again. Because again, if you're not very clear or precise about the thing that you want or the outcome that you're trying to get to or what your goals are, then like I said before, you might not realize what is coming back to you because it's not related to what you feel like you wanted or it wasn't outlined to be clear about what it is that you wanted. And that's really why intention is important with spell work. I want to be really clear that intention is not the only thing that matters in spell work. There's a lot of different stages of the spell process, but intention is an important, like, you know, one part of it that it is important to kind of understand about why you're doing this. An analogy that I think is really helpful in understanding why intention is important, if you went to a restaurant and you were for dinner, and you were hungry and the, you, you have this menu, you have all of these options that you can choose from and when the server comes by and asks you, okay, what would you like to eat tonight? And you say, I'd like dinner, then you could have returned to you any number of things that are on that menu. But it not, might not be exactly what you wanted. You'd be getting what you asked for, dinner, something to eat, it's food, but it might not be the thing that you really were craving or the thing that would really satisfy you. Another thing to keep in mind when you are setting an intention is, or another reason why it's important to set an intention is so that you don't accidentally manifest something that you didn't actually want. One example of a story that when this happened to me is that when I went to New Zealand with my husband before we were married, I cast a spell prior to the trip. So actually, you know, several trip um, spells. I did a sigil for protection on all of our luggage and things, and I cast a spell to help make the trip less expensive. And I wasn't really specific about that, because it seems obvious, like if you want it to be less expensive, in my mind I was thinking, you know, things would cost less. <laughs> we would find deals everywhere we went. We would find, we would have discounts on our meals, or we would find something really yummy and cheap. But like I said, I wasn't specific and used those exact words. And so instead of those things, which is what I really wanted for us to find, what we got was just extra food everywhere we went. It was seriously like every single restaurant or grocery store that we went to, everything was like buy one, get one free. And at restaurants, one time they brought us um, two meals. I guess they thought we had ordered two meals, but we didn't pay for two meals. So it was just like a glitch in their system. So we were able to save that food and have it as leftovers. We were traveling in a camper van, so we were able to, we had a refrigerator in our van and we were able to save those things for the next meal. Technically that's less expensive, but it wasn't exactly what I meant. And there was another time where they did a mistake on the meal and they made it right, obviously. They fixed it and brought out the other meal, but they couldn't take back the other food. So again, we had extra food. <laughs> So, like I said, it wasn't exactly what we meant because we ended up not being able to try other restaurants that we might have tried because we had this extra food. And I'm not complaining because it was an amazing trip and all of this was very, um, like, it, it was funny. It ha it's a good story. Uh, it was just, you know, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for by casting the spell. It wasn't the outcome that I desired. So it would have been better to be more specific and say, make an, an affirmation like I pay less for food and lodging wherever I go or something like that um, because that's very specific about what I wanted. And a third reason to make sure that you set intentions and be very clear about the intention that you're setting for your spell work is because the intention is what puts you into the spell. 
the tools and the materials, the crystals, the herbs, the candles, using color, using symbols, all of these things that anchor spirit realm entities like the elements and deities and the zodiac and planets, all of those things that live in the spirit realm, and then you anchor them in the physical realm. These are the craft part of the word witchcraft. They make it tangible, or, you know, they, they are the tools that a craft, like if you, a craft like sewing, you need tools like the needle and the, and the sewing machine and the fabric and the thread. For witchcraft, you need all these crystals and herbs and all of that. Being very clear and precise about what you want and using words to describe what you want, whether you speak them out loud or think them in your head, that's what puts you, the witch, into the witchcraft. Or at least that's how I see it. So those are three reasons why you want to set clear and precise intentions when doing spell work. One is so that you get what you want. Instead of dinner, you get a baked potato, a specific thing. One is so that you don't accidentally get what you don't want that's kind of close to what you wanted. <laughs> like getting extra food when what you really wanted was cheaper food. And then the third is because it's what puts you, the witch, into the witchcraft. So here's just a few tips for helping you to set intentions and then help your spell to succeed through those, through intentional actions. The first thing that I like to do with intentions is to formulate them like an affirmation. So if you don't know what an affirmation is, it's like an I am statement where you're speaking about yourself and the statement might not be true, but it's something that you want to be true. I pay my rent with money to spare before it is due. Even if that's not true, but if that's something that you want to have true, saying it like this it has a little bit more power than saying something like, send me money. <laughs> or send me rent money, to be even more specific. So an affirmation is always in present tense. It always uses uh, your pronouns, the way you talk about yourself, I, me, my, and it is clear. Another important component of spell work and the intentional part of the spell work is to visualize the spell work. Visualize is kind of a misnomer. I say this a lot. Visualize implies that it's just a visual thing, but it's actually like a, a full experience. Maybe it's better to say to experience your intention using all of your senses, not only your sense of sight, but also hearing, um, smell, taste, and touch, and your emotions as well. Putting yourself into like a mental imagining of what it would be like to be the person who does pay their rent on, on time and has money left over after paying the rent to continue with the example from before. What would your space look like? What would you be surrounded by? What kind of music might be playing? Or what kind of sounds might you be hearing in that space? What would it smell like? Would you have? Would you be spending your extra money on candles and things that make the space smell better? Potpourri and things like that. What kind of textures would be on the couches and the bedding? And what col colors would things be? And what emotions are you feeling and all of that putting yourself into this mental picture of what it would be like to if that affirmation the words that you're saying were your reality and then i think one of the very most important steps of intentional spell work is to take action on the intention i think a lot of people approach witchcraft especially newer people who might not fully understand what it is that we're talking about, or people who are outside of witchcraft who look at us and have a misunderstanding of what witchcraft is. To me, witchcraft is a way to help us to focus on the things that we want in life. And so the spell is that opportunity to really focus on the thing that you want and do and incorporate symbols and colors and, you know, the spirit realm entities and all the things that I listed before into the spell work. Just taking time outside of the busyness of your regular day to focus on w what you want to see in your life. And I think a lot of people get stuck on the spell being, oh, you know, you've done the spell and now you just wait. <laughs> and there are a lot of people who teach this, especially in the, like, law of attraction secret part of the, this type of world where it's like, don't think about it once you've done the ritual and then it'll happen. But the way that I experience witchcraft and the way that I like to think about it and talk about it and teach about it is that you need to be aware of the 
opportunities that come to you after you've done the spell work. So once the spell is complete, pay attention to all of the different things that are happening <laughs> that might be in alignment with that spell. Take action towards those things. So if your intention was that you might have extra money after you've paid all of your bills and things. Are there different opportunities opening up around you that might offer you extra money in addition to whatever job or whatever you have? And this could also be doing things. For example, if your intention was to find a house that's closer to work and has a yard, like if that's your specific intention, look for open houses that fit that and go tour them. Or look on Zillow and find if there are houses in your area, they might not have an open house, but maybe they have a realtor, call them, see if you can check out the house. Even if that's outside of your price range, just giving yourself the, that's like an opportunity to go look at something that is something you want. You know, test driving a car, if you want like an electric car, going to dealerships and test driving electric cars, even if they're out of your price range, even if it's not where you are right now, just giving yourself that opportunity to be in the situation that you want to be in. Another example, if you're looking for a soulmate, maybe buying a set of mugs for you and your soulmate and keeping that in the cupboard or clearing out a space in your closet where your soon-to-be romantic partner can put their clothes when they come and visit you. But just these, you know, symbolic things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life that makes space for that thing to enter your life. So I do hope that this helps you to understand what an intention is, or at least the way that I think about it. I'd be really interested if other people have different impressions of what I'm talking about here. Writing intentions, visualization, looking for opportunities and taking action that's in alignment with the thing that you want and all of the other things that I talked about in this video. If you have something to add, if you had some sort of aha moment, or if you have a difference of opinion that you want to share as well, I'd love to hear that. So just let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow and I really appreciate it. But that's all I have today, so I really hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.